so excited to have on a friend of mine, Frank Shelton, who's a worldwide evangelist, has a really great television show called By Faith with Frank Shelton. He's ministered all over the world and in Ghana to 118,000 people. Um, he's got such an amazing lineage, his family lineage that goes all the way back to Washington and even has some crossings with Abraham Lincoln. You definitely don't want to miss this interview. He's an amazing man of God. Um, I'm really excited for him to share faith testimonies you've never heard of before. So by God's grace. So before we do, I want to say a quick thank you to the sponsor of this video, Noble Gold Investments. If you're looking to invest in gold and silver or gold and silver IRAs, they're an amazing, amazing website, amazing company um, as well. So thank you for funding a demonetized dangerous channel on YouTube. Without further ado, I'm going to welcome in Frank Shelton. It is an honor, Frank, to have you on today. I'm so excited. As people heard in my intro, you're a friend of mine and you have such an amazing evangelical anointing on you preaching in Africa for, to 118,000 people for three years in a row. I mean, you were also part of the Billy Graham's um, organization. So it's such an honor to have you here. Thank you for being here with us. No, Anna, the honor is mine. And um, I just I just love how God uses you. And um and you are on, on on our TV show, and man, people still talk about it. It, it airs across the country, yes. but also um, we're heavily in Las Vegas, and your your testimony is powerful. So I'm the fortunate one. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. Well, listen, it's an honor to have you on, and you have such an incredible background. Why don't you share a little bit about your American history background? <laughs> I mean, your great grandfather or great was carrying Abraham Lincoln's. I mean, you got to you got to share this. Yeah. So we're we're <laughs> six generation Washingtonians, and I know they're trying to drain the swamp, but the whole swamp isn't bad. Can I get an amen? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the Bible says, "Bloom where you were planted." My mother and father both were employed at the U.S. Capitol, pregnant with me. And my mom went into labor on President's Day weekend and almost gave birth to me in the halls of Congress. And um, a lot of people say, oh, you know, I come to visit. Well, some of us were born to work there. And I was born President's Day weekend. Uh, my son was born Inauguration Day, the hour Obama became president. And my mom's 4th of July. So I think if you cut our veins, they're red, white, and blue. Um, but having said that, um, I was going to go into politics, preach, or protect the president. And um, my mom worked for the Capitol Historical Society. And my father retired as the acting assistant chief of the entire U.S. Capitol Police. So out of 3,000 D.C. cops, my dad was number two when he retired of the whole U.S. Capitol Police. So wow. at the federal level, my dad was a top cop. But that protected eight U.S. presidents. But my mom's the historian. My great, great, great grandfather the Sheltons mm -hmm. have indirectly or directly protected the last 26 out of 29 U.S. presidents. And uh, it was my ancestor, Joseph Gale Shelton, who hand carried President Abraham Lincoln across the street the night he died. Oh so my that, God. that was on my father's side. But on my mother's side, um, my ancestor, 1912, was the chief foreman of the U.S. Park Service who hand planted the world famous cherry blossoms around the tidal basin. It took two years, but that was my ancestor on my mother's side who planted the cherry blossom. So what's cool, Anna, is my one ancestor carried a president and death. The other one planted something in life, but they both held greatness in their hands. Mm. So we all carry greatness. But what's wild is on my mom's side, my uh, great grandfather lived eight doors down in Georgetown from John F. Kennedy and Jackie. So my mom used to see the Kennedys and then, you know, we could go on, but if we kept going, it would look like we're dropping names. So I'm going to park the car here, but you know, <laughs> every name is important to God. I love that verse, whatever your hand finds to do. So whether you work yeah. at Walmart or the West wing of the white house, we just got to shine a light, but DC is home. So I was going to go into politics, preach or protect the president. Mm -hmm. and I had a, um, an interview with the U.S. Secret Service and the chief special agent in charge of the Baltimore field office said, Frank, you would have made one hell of a special agent. <laughs> and that's the one time I didn't mind hearing hell in a sentence other than a sermon. Mm -hmm. But I would have been six consecutive D.C. police. Um, but I felt like, Anna, God gave me a message. I couldn't keep it a secret. So after working yeah. 20 years on Capitol Hill, I I volunteered in four White Houses. I worked for the U.S. Senate. I was a speechwriter to a congressman. I was an aide to the governor, and I um, was a fundraiser for George W. Bush. 
So I was blessed to do all that. And we need noble people. And for the last four out of five years, I've led a weekly Bible study to our state senators in the Capitol. Um, I believe the church has been good going after the poor, but we mm -hmm. didn't always go after the powerful. Amen. So whether you're homeless or Harvard or Hollywood, I just believe we need him. So we're just trying to shine a light and influence influencers because Schwarzenegger was not the first to say, I'll be back. It was Jesus and he's coming pretty <laughs> soon. <laughs> So spot on. It's so true. Well, I, I, it's such an amazing lineage that the Lord has in your family. It's a generational blessing, generational influence on the swamp. No wonder that you still live there. Many people don't want to live there, but yeah. you're really called to it. But you're also called as well to, you know, being a worldwide evangelist. You have a number one, one number one show um, as well by faith with Frank Shelton. Yeah. Uh, you ministered over 310 million homes around the world and it's called by faith. And, and the name of the show is, is living by faith, living exactly. a supernatural life. I know yeah. you have so many incredible testimonies. I want to just let you just take the wheel and just share some incredible testimonies of your own life. Yeah. And even some, whether even some historical testimonies as well that you want to share, we'd love to hear it. Well, no, you're sweet. So let me, let me take you back. I got saved at age seven. And okay. I was going to a country church in Maryland running 33. And the pastor's wife said in 1982, ever brought the most kids a vacation, Bible school would win this prize. And I started thinking, you know, Anna, if I start inviting friends and they say, no, I may look bad or I'll have no friends or they may think I'm holier than thou or, or what about if they ask me a question and I don't know. But I just believe saved people should want to see people saved. And I just think a true friend just tells people about Jesus. And I started inviting friends. I got some no's, but the abbreviated version, God used me at 10 years old in 1982. I brought 22 kids to vacation Bible school in one week at a church running 33. You can imagine who won the prize. It was me. Wow. <laughs> and I was told if you live for God, you'll have no friends. Well, mm -hmm. I believe if you promote the Lord, he'll promote you. And, and, and you've seen it in your life. I mean, you're on some of the biggest stages in the country, and I'm really proud of you. And um, so fast forward three years later, it's now 85. I go see a Rainbow 2 movie. They gave me a piece of paper. I said, what's this? They said, it's a chance to spend the weekend with Sylvester Stallone if you get this questionnaire wow. right. And I prayed, <laughs> and I said, God, I'd love to meet Sylvester Stallone. He was my childhood hero, and I entered, and my godmother and I both entered. We had a better chance of getting struck by lightning. What were the odds? We made a pact. If I win, I'll take you. And she laughed. If I win, I'll take you. She wins. And she honored her promise. We flew to Los Angeles, 1985. We bought Sylvester Stallone a Bible. And on the whole flight over there, Satan was saying, whatever you do, don't give Rambo the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, I, I, I shared with my friends. Now I'm getting ready to share with Famous. And am I going to chicken out? And I'm 13 years old. I'm with the biggest Hollywood star in history. Him and Arnold were tied at the time. Mm -hmm. And I just said, sir, heaven won't be the same without you. And we gave him the Bible. And uh, what's really wild is I didn't start out with the famous. I started with my friends. I didn't start out in Hollywood. I started out by my house. But because I had a burden with friends and anonymity, I didn't chicken out when I was toe-to-toe -to -toe with celebrity. And we end up sharing the gospel with Sylvester Stallone. And I come home. And Anna, this was the Lord. I was voted the president of student government out of 800 kids in a public school, not homeschool, private school, Christian school, wow. eighth grade. God gave me that platform. And now I'm the president of the whole student government. So I started writing my own speeches and I'm speaking to 800 kids, even in eighth grade. And when you think about it, most pastors today are maybe speaking to two or 300. Mm -hmm. I'm addressing 800 every day as a 13 year old. That was God early. Then I gave the graduation speech in eighth grade. I go off to high school. I was told you got to sleep around, do drugs, do this, do that, and you may get popular. Well, mm -hmm. I decided to just shine a light for the Lord, not holier than thou, but I was a fish going upstream, a wood against the grain. And I played three years on the basketball team, but my senior year out of 1,200 people, um, still a virgin in high school, I was named not only the most popular kid in the entire public school, they voted me prom king my senior year. Wow. And it just goes to show if you promote the Lord, yes. <laughs> he'll promote you. So then I um, go off to the community college. I'm the president of the Christian fellowship. And they've told me all these years later, the crowds have never been as large since I left the community college. 
And uh, we were just going after lost people and making everyone feel important, whether they were in the Gothic or, you know, heavy metal or, you know, whatever, just God would love everybody. Mm-hmm. And then I go off to a college in North Carolina and my senior year, they asked me to, to close the keynote as the student led speaker for a revival at a Christian college. And um, the professor said it was the largest crowd he'd ever seen in all of his years at the college. So then I started working for a congressman. I started writing speeches. They said, how do you write for a congressman? I said, I say a little prayer and just pray maybe one day I'd give the speech in his absence. And one day he came in the office and threw the speech at me, hit me in the chest. I said, wow, I guess you didn't like that one. He goes, no, it's great, but I got votes on the floor of Congress tonight. I won't be able to go. I said, well, who's going to give it? The chief of staff. He said, no, you wrote it. Go give it. So that opened up the doors. I started giving speeches in the congressman's absence at retirements, at graduations, um, four-star mm-hmm. general. I gave a Nobel Peace Prize recipient. I'm on the head dial with the U.S. Senator. The congressman was supposed to go. I'm the only one not in the tux that night because he told me 22 minutes before it started he couldn't go, and I'm giving a speech in his absence to a 1,000 people. And that opened up some crazy doors. But I said all that to say, then, yeah, if you look just over my shoulder, that's almost, it's a hundred, you were right, 118,000 with the Uganda flag in the middle. Wow. That was the Nelson Mandela soccer stadium. Well, I did that three New Year's Eve in a row. The, their president and vice president was on that platform. So in three sermons, I preached to 360,000 people just in three talks. And mm-hmm. Billy Graham's son-in-law called me and said, holy smokes. He said, Frank, uh, Franklin Graham's largest crowd last year was in Libya to 44,000. He said, you're not even a Graham and you triple the crowd, you know, so that was the Lord, <laughs> but mm-hmm. I'm just a goofball for God. But having said all of that, you know, um, so when I was working on Capitol Hill, um, I was bivocational, which meant I had a full-time job, but like Paul made tense, not only was I writing speeches, I was daydreaming of my next sermon. Mm-hmm. And my last year on Capitol Hill full-time with the government was 2007. And in one year, Anna, I preached 114 times in 12 states in 52 weeks with a full-time government job. So every weekend I was on the plane going somewhere. And it got to the point where TBN was calling and Daystar TV was calling and some of these other television networks. And thank God for it. But the government was getting a little nervous. Like on one hand, we're proud of you, but they can almost feel like they own you. And unless you're the public information officer, if you're the, you know, you know, the, the staff spokesperson or the chief of staff, they really didn't want to see you too much on TV. On one hand, they're clapping. The other is you got haters and jealous people. Sure. And then I had to realize, was I going to serve Gov, G-O-V, or God? And I was doing both. But when mm-hmm. I had to make a decision, I left, you talk about just a testimony of faith. I left retirement, 401k, health insurance. July 27, 2007, without a single booking lined up. Now I'm married with a kid and one on the way and a house payment's due in 30 days. And a lot of people will talk faith, but man, I stepped out by faith. I left retirement and health insurance. And, um, but you know what? God was faithful. And I've now been in all 50 states and um, I've been in about two dozen countries. And now the TV ministry is... 310 million homes on four continents every week. But um, I'm just the little kid who at age 10 had a burden for lost people and one week brought 22 friends to church. And we're still going after a few more now. So that's in a nutshell, kind of what God has been doing. Um, but we're just having fun. And But I still have a heart on the hill. Mm-hmm. And, um, I've been blessed. I've been on Air Force One. I've flown on Air Force Two. And lately it's been Southwest Airlines. <laughs> Do you know what Delta means? Don't no. expect to leave the airport. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, you know what? I, Delta's my favorite. I haven't no, had I don't, don't expect luggage to arrive. I may get sued, yeah. but that was fun. But no, Delta's great. But yeah. no, once you've been on those jets, you get spoiled. But first class is mm. just what God called you to do. Amen. And and you can see some pictures. And, and you've done so much. Like there's the White House. And there's I was on Sean Hannity. And um. Kim Goyfil, who's, you know, with Donald Trump Jr. now, um, she interviewed me years ago on Fox. But I'm just, Billy Graham used every means possible, and you do it as good as anyone. I mean, whether it's newsprint or writing articles, a blog, a podcast, TV, 
yes. you know, whatever you can to lift up the name of Jesus. Because he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto him. Yes. And, um, so you've actually been an inspiration without even realizing it. And I just love all the things you're doing. So. Praise the Lord. You know, all glory. All glory be to Jesus. He's so good. And, and I just love hearing faith stories because it really, you know, it elevates our faith as well. I mean, there's so many things in my life where the Lord has just totally provided in yeah. situations where I thought, what am I going to do here? And God is so faithful. And as you were saying, you know, you left everything behind and you stepped out in faith and boom, there's the father providing all the ways. And you got, you know, kids and, and, and expenses, everything. He, he, he so knows every need that we have. And he's such a good father. He's a good, good father. Really Amen. like that song. I love that. Sings. It's so true. Um, yeah. I want you to also share some, yeah, I know you have some other amazing testimonies too, that maybe stick out to you that you yeah. want to share. And you have a lot of amazing guests on your television program. Maybe you want to share some of those stories as well. Sure. You know, them firsthand. Well, so. you're sweet. Well, before we jump off, remember this, um, yeah. without faith, it's impossible to please God. Jesus Amen. said, when I return, will I find faith on the earth? I believe fear honors the devil, but faith honors God. And fear is false evidence appearing real. And I really believe, um, show me your faith, and then God will show you his favor. Mm. And see, Baskin Robbins was 39 flavors. A flavor is a taste made by man, but favor is one touch from God. And I believe when we show God our faith, he will show us his favor. Like even when Moses went to the Red Sea, mm. he didn't part it 10 years in advance or 10 seconds in advance, not even 10 steps in advance. The Bible said Moses' sandals had to get in the sea before it split. You see what I'm saying? So right. when Moses did everything he could by faith, that's yeah. when the favor of God split the sea where yeah. God could show up and show off. And, and I told him that. Yeah, yeah, it's our action of faith that totally. then allows the Red Sea to open for God to move. He you requires just, an action. You just nailed it because um, a mega church pastor asked me two years ago, right before the pandemic, can he sit down and pick my brain? And I said, sure. Mm. He's like, man, how are you doing it? I said, sir, it's just faith. He's like, for real, how are you doing it? Like he was looking for a model or a method. I said, man, it's just Jesus. He's like, <laughs> Like, so like, so what's your blueprint? I said, man, it's the Bible. <laughs> and I could see where he was going and he was pushing me. And I got to the point, I'm not usually this bold, but I said, sir, in love, can I, can I be frank with you? Cause my mom didn't name me Mark. I'm just being real. You know, <laughs> he said, sure. I said, sir, I think you started out with your savior, but over the years, you're kind of relying on your savings and you got millions of dollars in your church account. And unless you all can just like write a check for it, you're not going to believe God for it. And then sometimes it's tempting to do a press release. Look what we did for God mm. when it's really all God. And so I told him in love, I said, sir, you may out finance me, but you won't out faith me because <laughs> faith is all I got. You see what I'm saying? I almost feel like the homeless guy was signed. You know, I'm willing to preach, you know, just bring me in. I'll preach my heart out and God does the rest. But having said that, I'll give you another example. Um, and, 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 and actually, if I can jump in and say, I yeah. mean, I feel like churches need to do more of what Jesus did in the Bible, where he sent out the 70. He said, you know, go out in twos. That's don't take any food. Don't take any any raiment. Don't take any clothes. Don't take anything with you. Don't even take a dollar or a quarter in your pocket and go. If, if, if churches nowadays would actually put their church to the test and be led by the Holy Ghost and do that, um, we would see so many people in faith because it's really in the valleys that we it really builds our faith, that we see God's hand move. That's why because God loves to show off. And he loves to take care of his flock. He and you're, you're so spot on with that. But uh, continue. No, Anna, you're right. Um, I think he's not only dying to save us, he's dying to use us. And I think we all have different love languages. But I really believe faith presses the heartbeat of God. It touches the heart of God. And faith opens up the economy of God. You, yeah. you know what I mean? When you just step out by faith, I was told when you're in God's will, it's on his bill. And when God guides, he provides. Yes. So when you're just doing what he called you to do, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. But wow. I'll give you another um, example. Um, I don't know who this is for, but I love the way you roll because we're very similar. I love the political process. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we need godly people everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but here's the word of the day. And I know you agree with this, but for those who may be on the fence, if we only hang out and minister with folks who look like us and talk like us, and dress like us and vote like us, we probably don't look like Jesus. Paul was all things to all men to win some. And I wanted way more than one political party at my funeral. And what my prayer has been is if we don't see, 
massive revival breakout on earth, and we have seen quite a bit, my prayer is that revival will break out at my funeral. Mm. Sometimes it takes dying for the light bulb to go off and think that's why he lived the way he did. And then to have the preacher give an invitation, I'm convinced because I've preached funerals where we've seen dozens get saved. Yes. And uh, I can't wait to see how many may get saved at my funeral, not because I was so good, but I did my best to live up the one who was God and that's Jesus. So here's one thing. Some of my best ministry moments were people politically opposite of me, but that's when you give room for God to use you. Mm -hmm. um, I had met Biden way back in the nineties. I was the youngest in 40 years to work on the floor of the U S Senate. So half the day I'm with the Republicans, the other half with the Democrats. Out of 5,000 Senate employees, only three of us worked on the floor all day with all 100 senators. It was a bipartisan figure, so I got to meet from Bob Dole to Ted Kennedy on both sides. And I'm trying to speak life to both of them. And my thing is, Anna, if my dad would be willing to die for eight presidents, we need to pray and say hi to folks a little bit different than us. Yes, yes. So when I, heard, I, I had met Biden way back, he was a senator from Delaware on the Foreign Relations Committee. I knew the story. Um, but when his son, Bo, died, when he was vice president, I also represent all of Delaware, Maryland for Billy Graham and Franklin. And the Lord clearly said, get in your car by faith. And I want you to go to the Dover State Capitol and pay your respects and see if you can run into then Vice President Joe Biden and just minister to him. And I'm driving 150 miles each way. And on every drive there by myself, Satan was teasing me, go back. You've missed it. You didn't hear from God. The vice president doesn't want to hear about the Lord. He does, you know, he doesn't may not ever remember you. A lot's going through my mind. I'm not going to find a place to park. But when God says go, we got to get going. And I get there. And would you believe there was a spot placed right behind the state capitol? I'm convinced the Lord reserved it for me. And yes, I thought the line would be wrapped around the door. And it was later on because I was one of the first ones there. I'm 10 in line. And then I go through the Secret Service and I got friends with the Secret Service, but it's not every day you go through the Secret Service to go to a funeral. That was a little different. And I go into the state capitol and I look and there's the American flag draped casket and there's Vice President Biden, his wife, Jill Biden. There's Bo, um, Hunter Biden. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, so I'm ministering to Biden at the time and I he said, what are you doing now? And I said, sir, I'm now on staff with Billy Graham. I'm an evangelist. And all I can tell you, Anna, at that moment, he was weeping and he grabbed my hand and he said three times, he said, pray, pray, pray for my family. Wow. So then I hugged his wife and I met Hunter Biden and we'll just leave that there. I've been praying for him. We, we all need prayer. Mm -hmm. And I met the whole family, the widow, the kids. And as I leave, there were some reporters out there and someone was hinting, are you a Republican or a Democrat? And I said, sir, today I am a born again Christian and I am an American. Amen. And that's even more important. And he said, why would you come today? And I said, I wanted the vice president to know that God was with them even when the bottom fell out. Yes. And I think, you know, anyone can show up in someone's mountaintops, but ministry shows up in their valleys. So and I also believe Jesus shows up even if they're totally different than you. And then next thing I'm invited to speak on behalf of communist dictator Daniel Ortega, I flew to Nicaragua by myself and preached five days in five cities at a massive revival. We had mayors get saved. I had a cabinet member get saved. I'm with Ambassador Israel. I'm with the president of the country. They let me speak on the floor of their Congress, and I preached for 20 minutes the gospel of Jesus in a communist country's Congress. I mean, I'm forced to go. I'm a goofball for God. But here's the thing. If I was holier than thou, you know, he doesn't have a yeah. chance. He's going to split hell wide open. Mm -hmm. If if you don't represent God, you know, so who what's will. crazy. Yeah, who will. And then on the way home, this was something straight out of the movies. You would have thought it was clear and present danger. You would have thought I was Harrison Ford or something. They called me and said, you have to miss the flight in the morning. Now, this is leaving this country. And they said, the president wants me to come to the house. And he wanted me to lay hands on President Daniel Ortega. Wow. Well, you probably remember the Iran Contra stuff with Reagan and Ali Noor. I mean, I did some history, but I'm now asked to lay hands on a man and, and praying. And he's asking for prayer. So I missed the flight. Now, we put a lot on Facebook that wasn't on Facebook, but I'm just saying 
Wow. It's been a wild ride. So I've seen, you know, homeless to Hollywood to heads of state. It's It's been wild. But, you know, when you go back and look, it's grace that God would not only save us, but that he would want to love us and be a friend to us. Do you remember the movie 16 Candles? I never saw it. Okay. It was Which a classic. Was Molly, you would love this. Molly Ringwald. And uh, she was, um, you know, an attractive girl, but it seems like, you know, I think her sister was getting married and she kind of felt left out. Well, at the end of the movie, the most handsome hunk in the whole movie shows up in a red Porsche and he's like, he's pointing to Molly Ringwald, the one who was the bridesmaid. And she's like looking over her shoulder, like surely there's someone other than me. And he's pointing like, no, I, I want to go out on a date with you. And so where she felt so low, now she's never been so high and she's in this guy's red Porsche. They go happily ever after but not only some handsome hunk or some Hollywood hero, heaven's only son is choosing to not only he picked you, he picked me. Yes. He's picking our viewers today. It's like God is saying, I'm dying to hang out with you. Mm. And see, when you're used by the world, you'll feel like trash. You know, when my friends got high on crack, they felt like a loser. But when you get high on heaven, you're a winner. That's and right. the greatest high is to be used by the most high. So I take it back to grace, but also faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And every morning, my prayer is just probably what your prayer is. God, here am I. Send me. Here am I. Use me. And I just feel like a pawn on God's chessboard, and he has a way to move us. And uh, it's been a great experience. And I just want to encourage your people. Um, number mm -hmm. one, the reason your rearview mirror is smaller than your car windshield because where you're going with God is more importantly than where you've been with the devil. So the next time the devil brings up your past, bring up his future because he doesn't have one. And, you know, God uses imperfect people to promote a perfect God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I didn't have to get straight A's. You know, you just got to say, God, I'm willing to get in the game. And I just think time is short and we need all hands on deck. And uh, yeah, it, it's been amazing. But God is good. That's so good. That's so powerful, Frank. I mean, it's so true. Even in the word says that God gives grace to the humble. In your spirit, you 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 just said, Lord, here I am. I don't have anything. I, I just have you. Use me, Lord, any way that you see fit. And I can just feel the humility. Even as a child, you were just so in awe of God. Yeah. Let me let me ask you just to kind of take it back. I know that you, you ministered as a as a 13-year-old, 10-year-old, even in school. What was your, when did you get saved? I mean, yeah, what was the story with that? You didn't get to share that. So, yeah, that's a great question. So my- you have much faith as, as, as a youngling. I even sense it now, how much faith you had as a kid. I mean, it's unbelievable. Well, 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 let me tell you the power of also not only faith, but friends. Yes. Who you hang out with is what you become. Mm -hmm. My godmother, who I talk to today, my mom's best friend since fourth grade, the one- who took me to meet Stallone at 13. You're going to love this story. I'm getting goosebumps because you had no idea I was going to hit you with this. Yes. <laughs> she led my mom to the Lord when I was seven. Mm. The backstory, true story, for three weeks in a row, Anna, the Jehovah Witness and Mormons came to my house three weeks in a row and knocked on the door. Wow. And my mom opened up two times and she had made up in her mind if they come again next week, we're not religious. I'm going to let them in our house to see maybe what they're talking about. Wow. And the crazy thing is, is my godmother got saved on a Saturday, flew back from Dallas to D.C. on a Sunday. And by Tuesday afternoon, drove straight to my mom, her best friend. Hadn't been saved 72 hours. All she knew come meet a man that told me everything about me. And she led my mom to the Lord. And wow. two days later, when the Mormons knocked on our door, my mom said, thanks, but no thanks. I found what I was looking for and slammed the door. Now there's two things about that. I almost got connected with the cult. I may have been the most fired up Jehovah Witness or Mormon you've ever met. Sure. And number two, cults are beating us at our own game. They're still sharing their faith publicly. Yep. And 90 percent of Christians will live their whole life never leading anyone to Jesus. But let me tell you how cool God is. So then she not only, um, she waited in the hotel of Los Angeles one time 
for four hours because Elvis Presley in 74 was playing at the um, forum where the Lakers used to play. And she had a Bible for Elvis Presley. And sure enough, she kissed Elvis Presley and gave him the Bible. Then a few years later, she's the one, her and I, giving Stallone the Bible. And then next thing I know, she's telling me, I just ran into John Travolta and I told him Jesus loves. I mean, it, she's she's the pastor to the stars and she's a female. I mean, she's amazing. Well, fast forward, I was talking to my son just recently and my son's 13. I was 13 when I met Stallone. And I said, Andrew, if you could meet one celebrity or athlete, who would you want to meet? And he said, Daddy, I'd love to meet Sylvester Stallone. Wow. Well, you're the first to know this. The crazy thing is um, lightning did strike twice because my son doesn't know this, but next week on December 9th, I'm on a flight to Hollywood and I'm taking my son, my wife, and I called Judy. And I said, you took me the first time, I'm taking the second time. And we've been invited to have a dinner with Sylvester Stallone in Hollywood. And I'm gonna introduce my 13 year old in Hollywood to him and we're retaking the picture 38 oh, years later. Isn't that crazy? That is so good. <laughs> and my godmother's coming with me. So, so the, he, we're gonna, gonna take a picture for night together again. Is he gonna take another Bible to hand to him? Well, I she, think he's she, saved though, no? Yes, I've heard him say oh, many times, he said that my favorite quote by him is said, the church is the gym to the soul. He said, I used to train alone, but today Jesus is my personal trainer. So that thrilled my heart. And then, um, but, we're going to ask and love, hey, by any chance, do you still have the Bible? At least, and if not, we're glad you're in the word. But three, she has embroidered a scripture verse and she's going to hand them just that scripture verse. And the Bible says your gift will make room for you and bring you before kings and great men. But um, I love Stallone. Someone once asked him, what's the difference between Rocky and Rambo? And he said, Rocky is me after a cup of coffee. Rambo is before a cup of coffee. <laughs> I thought that was clear. Cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyways but you know my thing is even your hollywood heroes need him and yes. even the stars need the sun mm -hmm. and there's a lot of famous people but the key is are they forgiven and are they free mm. and, and i have a burden for hollywood and you know that's why more than ever you know i was talking to a friend who used to be on the young and the restless I was this close to flying once every 30 days to Los Angeles from DC to LA. That's a hype. Mm -hmm. Just to have a private Bible study to producers and helpers and actors and actresses. And I just really believe if we can influence them again, because the church has been great going after the poor, but we didn't always go after the powerful. And so I've been a chaplain now at three Olympics. And while they're going for gold, I give them God. Mm -hmm. And the guys have met all kinds of people, but, at the end of the day, it's not if you drove a Ferrari or if you had a couple gold medals or if you got millions in the bank, um, because the poorest person on the planet is not the one who had no savings in life. It's the one that had no savior in their death. That's right. Well, but it profit a man or woman to gain the world and lose their soul. And I want to thank you um, for going after souls. And, and uh, you haven't wavered and you're like a Ferrari with no brakes, just going after souls. So uh, that's, what, that's what it's all about. The Bible says those who win souls are wise. It's wisdom to extend a life savior that saved me and saved you. And that's Jesus. And it's the most amazing thing. Um, and I love that you have a heart for Hollywood. I do as well. And the Lord is is opening doors to come back as well to minister. Cause I said, Lord, I'm not going back by myself this time. Last time I was almost eaten alive this time. They would, the enemy would totally eat me alive, you know? And, and it's not because I don't know the Lord, but the enemy loves to corner people. It's so good and important to go with, 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 with believers. Two by two. two by yeah. two. Exactly. That's why the Lord knew that not to send them out one by one because the enemy would just devour corner you. And, you know, he's walking around like a roaring lion trying to devour our soul. So, but by the grace of God, Frank, it's such an honor to have you on here and share these beautiful testimonies and and uh, faith stories. And yeah. I didn't know that about your childhood. That is so God is so good. You know, your mom was open and yeah. she said, here I am, Lord. You know, next time they knock on the door, I'm going to receive whoever they, 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 they tell me about. I don't, I don't know if you can see this, yeah. it's not, but that's me ministering to Stallone. Do you see that little kid? That's me and Rocky. Hello. Isn't that neat? That's amazing. And now you're going to take your son. Yeah. That, that's pretty cool. But you that know, so cool. 
cool. I'm going to yeah. make sure, Frank, to, to to post this after December yeah. 9th so your son doesn't see this. Because I'm oh, sure well, no. right. Whenever you're ready, we're ready. But it's just <laughs> frankshelton.com. But, Anna, if I was locked in the freezer, I wouldn't be as cool as you. Oh. <laughs> and thank you for your one of, my, one of my favorite sayings is that you say you you say that I shop at Target. I shop at a Walmart because what? Because Target's already on my back. <laughs> yeah, when you preach the gospel, there's a bullseye on you. But That's you right. know what? Um, I have this saying: if you don't have any haters on earth, you're probably not a helper in heaven. Mm. You know, the Bible says, "Be careful when all men speak well of you." Amen. And, uh, but. In Christian but, worlds, yeah, that's that's Ruth, that's my wife, and Billy yeah. Graham had a Ruth, and I have a Ruth, and yes, yeah, and you're her Mordecai. Yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. Um, yes, yeah, so you and, and and also which I mentioned in the beginning, um, talk about your latest book, Urgency, real oh, quick, okay. because it was number one on Amazon. Um, just, I have two strikes on YouTube, so. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll be very careful. But it's an urgent hour, everyone. You're a big part, and you wrote an endorsement, and I am forever grateful. Praise I was God. honored. Um, yeah, when it, when the pandemic hit, I was booked in 10 countries in 12 months. And I just spoke in Africa in January, Nicaragua in February, and I was born in a plane to Pakistan by myself to preach to 100,000 Muslims, 10 miles from where they killed Osama bin Laden. And mm -hmm. they told me the Taliban was going to be on the rooftops. And they said, you can come, but you probably won't come home. And Anna, I was flying by myself to preach two reasons. One, I'm an evangelist. Two, Muslims need Jesus. And the bonus thing, three, I knew in my spirit that time was running short. That's why the cover of my book is an hourglass and the sand of time is about to slip through. Mm. And I was mad because that plane, the next day, the two weeks slow the curve lockdown happened, but I knew something was getting ready to happen. Yeah. I knew that the, like the, the, the water on the stove was boiling. I, I've heard for quite a while the siren that those who are truly listening to God could only hear. And I was like a watchman on the wall. And I knew that maybe the last time we could really go after souls. And my thought, and I was, I was either going to preach the gospel and see tens of thousands of saints because I've seen Muslims get saved. Mm -hmm. Again, if you only go out with folks, I think we've been guilty of preaching to the choir. That's why we ain't seeing revival. And then number two, um, I just knew that time was short, but I also knew if I got shot on that platform, I was willing to die. It would have went viral on YouTube and millions would have watched and got saved. So either way, Billy Graham said, you're not ready to live until you're ready to die. So I was ready to die. So when everything two weeks slow the curve. I was mad, but a lot of my friends on Facebook were like, oh my goodness, you know, you work for the government. You have mm -hmm. a few friends in Hollywood. You got an award of all places, the UN, which needs Jesus. Mm -hmm. You've heard some conversations, write a book. And in two weeks, I wrote 250 pages. It's unbelievable. And yeah, I mean, in, in school, I, I could barely pay attention. It was God. But anyways, when it came out, I talked about, you know what? And yes, this and that but here's the fact Anna. everything you and i were saying two years ago yeah true. i know all the conspiracy theorists are spot on yeah so for those that want to check out his book it's on urgency. amazon also on i think it's also on your website correct? Yeah. yeah but you can just go to urgency i mean amazon type frank shelton urgency and they'll mail it within two business days you'll have it Amen. But, um, but just more importantly but even at the end it tells friends time is short jesus is the only way and get as many friends as you can to heaven because yeah. I'll leave you with this thought. Um, the world thinks that hell's going to be the biggest party, you know, bikes, beaches, babes, bikini and beer. It's going to be one big party. That's a lie from hell. Right. Hell ain't going to be the biggest party. And even earth won't have the biggest parties. When I was in high school, it's like, who got the king this week? That's what they were saying. And I say this in love. You don't need the king of beers once you've met the king of kings. You know what I mean? Once you know Jesus, I got a lot of root beer, but I don't need any regular beer. But anyway, yeah. but the wild thing is the greatest party is going to be heaven. That's why I said he, she, that wins souls. Because, I mean, heaven's going to be the wildest party. No guilt, no shame. And uh, here's a thought to think of. If Jesus did the whole world in seven days, took a break. Can you imagine if he's been gone for 2,000 years and he was a carpenter? And he said, in my father's house are many mansions. And if it wasn't true, I wouldn't have told you so. And there where I may be, you may be here and also. So if he did this in a week, I mean, the houses on cribs will look like a shack compared that the mansions made by the Messiah. And there'll be no crooked edges when Christ the carpenter is carving something 
mm. for you. And I'm not in it for the house. I'm still in it for him. But when you seek ye first the kingdom, all these other things come on. So I, I joke with my wife. I may not have tons of money on earth, but we'll be all right in heaven. But my yeah. riches is in the Redeemer. Yes, in his right hand are riches Amen. and honor forever. Amen more and that's extended to his children not just in heaven but also on earth we got a fat bank account in heaven and it's only because jesus paid our debt on earth so we thank god for the victory we thank god for faith we thank god for the lord would you just lead us out in prayer frank yeah to those that maybe have, have tuning in now yeah. and they don't know jesus personally amen if you're here today you're watching and you've been inspired and maybe there's a tug in your heart and your world is upside down and i want to tell you this Going into this program, you may not believe in God, but God believes in you. And coming to Christ is just a prayer away, easy as the ABCs. A, admit that you're a sinner. Hey, we've all dropped the ball. B, believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And C, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. If you'd like your sins to be forgiven, if you'd like a reservation, not in the Hyatt, but heaven, today's your day. Just repeat this simple prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I'm a sinner, but you're the Savior. I heard at Christmas and Easter that Jesus died for the world, but I realize on Anna Kate's show today, if it was just me, Jesus, the Son of the living God, would have died just for me. Come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, take me to heaven when I die. I want to repent from my past. There's no life apart life from you. Save my soul, be my best friend, and I want to live for you you died for me in Jesus name. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, reach out to Anna today. And Anna, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to sow into your ministry today. And I want to encourage every single person who's also watching today, remind them how they can reach out and not only pray for you and partner for you, but how they can. Tomorrow is Giving Tuesday. So whenever you watch us, it's always the right time to give to someone who's doing it right. Yes. So uh, tell us how we can partner with you, but I'm going to sow a gift to you today. And uh, you're one of my heroes. Oh, well, thank you, Jesus. You're, you know, it's an honor to have you on here, Frank. I, we've been, I've been wanting to have you on for a while, and it's been in our schedules. You're so busy. I'm so busy. But by God's grace, we are fruitfully busy for the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. So thank you again for joining us. We love you, and I just bless you and your ministry. And Father, I thank you for more open doors in Jesus' name, Lord. I thank you for divine appointments, Lord. I thank you for souls being saved in Hollywood. The Lord told me this a few months ago that he's shaking Hollywood. And he told me very clearly, the finances for godly movies are here to take over Hollywood. And the Lord, it was just amazing. There was so, many, so much money right above our heads just for the godly movies the Lord has planned. But the Lord said that the devil, uh, that Satan can't stop what I'm about to do in Hollywood. And it was like, and I felt the reverberation in my spirit. And I thought, whoa, it's like a massive bomb that's about Amen. to go off in Hollywood. So I thank you. You're part of it, Frank. Only by God's grace, we're here. And Lord, if the Lord can use a donkey, he can use Anna Kate and Frank Shelton. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so God bless you. And thank you. And I uh, hope to catch up soon. Yes, guys. And is it okay if I share your email? No, for people sure. if they have a yeah. question. And it's Frank and so, at frankshelton.com. Amen. And you guys can can uh, sow a seed into Frank's ministry as well, Worldwide Ministry. So, Frank, thank you again. Love you and thank bless you, you in Jesus' oh, name. You're the best. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys.